Hi, this is Allie, and you're listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. This is Sienna, and you are listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. to the two, two to the three, in the place to be. This is BQ. Welcome to the King of the Mound podcast, Impact Review. One thing you can never do is question my loyalty and my dedication to this podcast each and every week. It is about 4.30 in the morning right now. I'm flying solo for today's episode. No guest host, but let me tell you why. This is my long week. So this is my military reserve weekend. And what that means is basically... I'm working Monday through Friday, and then I've got my reserve weekend, and then I'm going to work Monday through Friday again. So it's my long, how many days is that? It's my long 12 days of working in a row. So unfortunately, I don't have the time that I uh, typically do uh, during the week and the weekend to knock out the podcast and additional content for my channel. So with the YouTube channel, I was able to um, do some content ahead of time and just re- and uh, schedule it on YouTube. Oh, but uh, man, with this podcast, I usually do it uh, Saturday mornings, Friday evenings, and uh, right now it's 4.30 in the morning on Sunday because this is the day that I upload the podcast, and uh, I've been real slam with uh, you know, with work, and I have, a, uh, I have about a 45-minute drive to and from work as well, and um, again, I'm a full-time college student, so I've got that going on as well, and then of course, I've got the kids at the house and everything, so it's... Uh, it's one of the uh, hectic times of the month for me, but I'm dedicated to talk and impact with you guys, and um, and here I am. Uh, now that that's out of the way, I'm not even drinking coffee right now or anything. I got up, and I am knocking this baby out. If you haven't been to kotmpodcast.site, that's kotmpodcast.site, that's where I upload the podcast every Sunday. So if you're not subscribed to YouTube or you are subscribed or you are subscribed on another platform, but you just want a really easy way of just every Sunday kind of logging on and seeing some links there for the podcast, that is the way to do it. Oh boy, I'm, I'm dragging a little bit this morning. I'm sorry guys, but that's just the nature of the beast, I guess. So before I get into uh, the Ed Nordholm interview a little bit, if there's a if you're looking for another great podcast to listen to that covers impact every week, I really recommend checking out the Heelcast. They've been doing this a lot longer than me, and they do a really great show. So all you have to do is look up the Heelcast, and these guys pop up, and they do a really good job. So, so Ed Nordholm was on the Wrestling Observer Radio. They're so effing annoying. Of all podcasts to do, he chooses Dave Meltzer. Are you calling me a liar? I think it was, I was glad that he did this. I'm glad that he he did it so quickly after all this controversy with Jeff Jarrett and with selling the company and everything. And he alluded to the fact that Jeff Jarrett shouldn't be gone too long, but that, uh, you know, right now, Scott Damore, Sanjay, and um, John John Gaburik, who I actually, I always have the hardest time saying his name. I actually thought that he was uh, gone from the company. I had no, no idea he was still lurking around but he is still there so they're going to be handling creative with the assistance of a uh, abyss and um, jeremy borash and one other person i don't remember offhand but let's hope jeff isn't gone too long we'd really hate to see him forced out of his own company twice and it's gonna you know maybe he can uh, license the name global force wrestling to them but if he was to be gone and he does in fact own the name it could um it could be pretty difficult and i really think even though he may be making some mistakes, and some would argue that he's not learning for some for, uh, learning for some past mistakes, uh, I think he's been doing doing a really good job so far. He also talked about the state of the company as obviously he wants to make the company profitable, and that he lost a lot of money in the last year, and and that it, it proved to be harder than he had expected it to be. And I've stated before, anyone who purchased a company in the state that they did, they they would have to believe that the company was going to be in red for at least a couple of years, you know, and um, this clown, Justin Labar, and I say this clown because he was the one that uh, this time last year, re- 
reported that, uh, and he was very confident in his reporting skills, who, who reported that WWE was buying the uh, TNA library. And he was, you know, honest to God, this is what's going on. So this clown uh, put out a tweet the other day, just a couple days ago, saying that I, I wonder what Ed Norholm's game is, end game is. Doesn't matter if you're losing a dollar or a million dollars, losing money is never a good thing. And I just responded to him. I said, surely you didn't expect them to be in the green after just six or seven months. I mean, people, people, oh my God, idiots. But I think they're doing a lot of good things to, uh, you know, to get to that point. I think the Global Wrestling Network is going to be the one that really gets them there. And uh, I did a, a uh, on the YouTube channel, I talked about it and I had done the math. And I think it was at 20,000 subscribers uh, at 7.99 that it grossed about two million a year. So you would imagine with a worldwide app, they could get some uh, pretty decent numbers in due time. It's not going to happen right away, but I think this is what's going to get them there and what's going to um, keep them profitable or make them profitable, I should say. And especially if they if they're able to get that crash AAA and Noah stuff on there, that is what's really going to put them over the top. And the other thing I stated is that there's a lot of people who maybe they don't watch a current product, but they'll have interest in the prior TNA library. Just like a lot of people don't watch a current E product, but they have uh, interest in the 80s wrestling or WCW, ECW, whatever. So I think um, I think it's going to do really well for them. It might take some time, but but I think it's going to be be a really good thing. And I, I can't wait for it to come aboard. It's supposed to happen next week. And... I knew that it wasn't going to be a free app. I know that's kind of how they were promoting it, but um, I was able to read between the lines a little bit since they kept harping on free episodes of Impact, not a free app. So it looks like in North America, at least 10 days after it airs on Pop TV, they're going to uh, have it on the app and on the network. So, so hell yeah. Uh, can't wait for the wrestling, uh, Global Wrestling Network. They've got about, looks like, uh, 800 hours already uploaded of the uh, three three thousand dollar I'm sorry the three thousand hour library and yeah he also talked about he's really understanding on this side of the situation now how how difficult it is to work with some of these promotions and um, some of the partnerships because of the past relationships they've had with TNA and uh, I you can say what you want about the global force wrestling name or maybe you want it to be Impact Wrestling. But it was really... A lot of people have been saying this on my channel lately. It, it was very essential to turn to change the name from TNA. We can talk about all day that we uh, we miss the name. We prefer the name. It's got this library. But here, here's the deal. The, 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 the obvious answer is that from a marketing, promotional, licensing standpoint... Uh, partnerships they're trying to build you cannot be called TNA and uh, you know that includes working with the Boys and Girls Club Camp Boggy Creek and um, you know some of those real positive things they're doing you can't be TNA it's it, that's just the common sense of it all but uh, also a lot of people I think this is one of the the main reasons I see online is that they want to stay true to the uh, TNA library and everything but Let's be real, a lot of the people who have left the company since then don't really want to associate themselves with it right now. So, to me, calling it TNA is not necessary. I, I think it was really great to to make the change and everything. And Ed stated that he is not trying to sell the company, that he was never trying to sell the company. And there's some people who want to say they want to call bullshit on that, but um, I, 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 I choose to believe him. <laughs> Maybe... Uh, Maybe I'm blind or whatever, but uh, I, ch I choose to believe him in this case. I think his, his goal is to uh, monetize the company and monetize the partnerships. And they're still talking with ITV Studios. So once they get that project going, that's going to um, that's gonna be increased revenue. And, you know, they've, uh, they've, there's a huge increase in YouTube ad revenue that they've been getting. And these streaming partnerships are really good, too, because, you know, it might be free to the downloader, but they do receive uh, revenue off those from, uh, you know, it's, it's small revenue, ad revenue and um, subscription revenue. But they have a lot of good partnerships and they're moving in a, in a really good direction where everything is going to come to a head. But, you know, they have to give it a year at least um, 
for that to really start to come into fruition. And uh, say, he said El Patron will be back at Bound for Glory. There were initially plans for him to face Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett was going to step out of the way and Rey Mysterio was going to replace him. But the tops, talks with Rey Mysterio are dead. So I wonder what they're going to do with El Patron. It sounds like since he's suspended and obviously he wasn't there for the tapings that, you know, they might be able to do some backstage stuff. You know, uh, Slammiversary fe featured uh, at least one match, maybe two. But I, I know the opening tag match where there were no in-ring promos or anything like that. And, um, you know, through video packages and social media, they were able to um, piece together a good tag team match. So maybe they do something here. But I would imagine if the creative plans were to have a surprise go up against Alberto, then I think we're still going to see something like that. Because you remember we thought Bully Ray, um, well, actually, we didn't know that, but Bully Ray was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, initially intended to win the world title and step into that slot on impact and then when he didn't work out they replaced him with alberto so usually i feel like with creative plans you know option a may not work but there's some kind of op option b that can slide in and still kind of keep the same creative plans going so uh so we'll see what happens with alberto i'm okay with him coming back because i thought he was doing a really good job of the company not saying I'm his biggest fan in the world, but I was I was happy with what he with what he did with what he did, and I guess over the next few months they're gonna insert a lot of matches from um, AAA, the Crash, and Noah. So uh, let's see at the Crash, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. But they have uh, OVE facing LAX at the Crash, and then. On October 1st, and Noah, Eddie Edwards defends his uh, GHC title, and then uh, Eli Drake, I believe, is defending the global title that night as well. And I don't know what they kind of have with Triple Mania going forward. You know, obviously, they, I mean, not Triple A, I should say. Obviously, they just had Triple Mania. But I think if uh, they do that and insert, I don't want them to do like they did with the Hardys, where it was just little clips, like, you know, put the match in there. Now, if it has um, foreign commentary or something, I can see, okay, now you, you got to put some clips because you're not going to stream the full match. But I think it's a good idea to do that. And hopefully it's, um, I'll have to talk to some people in the Impact Zone, but hopefully it makes the tapings a little bit shorter and the crowd is able to keep a little bit more life in them. Even if they cut it by 30 minutes, it's a there's a big difference between two and a half and a three hour show. And... Um, there's, I go to indie wrestling here, and I have Glory Pro, which is always a three-hour, three-and-a-half-hour show, and I'm kind of done by the two-and-a-half-hour mark. Yeah. And then uh, NWL, which is a much smaller promotion, they do about a two-hour show. Maybe it hit, hits two-and-a-half, but that feels really, really right to me. So hopefully they're um, you know, making the, the tapings a little bit shorter each night in the Impact Zone. Someone will have to reach out and let me know. If not, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll find out. So I think it's a good thing to insert some of this stuff in there and there is going to be tapings in november and it is going to be a long set of tapings again um and i have i have no problem with it as a fan because i don't read spoilers but if you if you read the spoilers then obviously um you know you're going to be watching about 12 episodes in a row where you where you know what's going on and to me that's not really any fun but i know some people like to do it and uh, more power to you if you enjoy that but let's get into Impact. I'm going to try to wrap this up uh, pretty quickly because I know it's a little bit different when I'm sitting here talking to myself, talking to my, I guess I'm talking to myself, but talking uh, by myself as opposed to having um, one of my guests on here. So I am going to still have a few uh, different guest hosts come on as far as, you know, some people who want to come on the show. And if I feel like they're qualified enough, we'll talk Impact. But I've settled on three people who are, are, are going to be my rotation going forward. So, um, so I think there's probably two or three more people I'm going to have come on the show and then, uh, then I'm going to have a rotation and I'm just going to be keeping it at that. And, uh, you know, the ones that I was really happy with, and then we're going to press forward doing that. So the show impact kicks off with Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley versus Petey Williams and Sanjay Dutt. So we're getting a nice X division tag team match, which is really exciting. And they've, they've been doing such good things with the X division because, you know, th God, think about a year ago, we we're just getting that three minute match, slow X division matches, and they just weren't enjoyable and every time we had that match we kept we kept sitting sitting here and saying man we just want an actual x division match and you know last year i don't remember what time they were doing that cruiserweight classic and all that stuff and but 
there was a point last year where cruiser weight cruiser weight wrestling was so hot and they had the opportunity with the X division to really show what they could do and they just weren't doing it. And so now this is really exciting and they kick it off with a good tag team match. It's great to see Caleb Conley doing something and I think he's a little awkward as a heel. I think he he's a heel in the indies but um I don't know if he if it's like an awkwardness or if it's because it seems like the 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 commentary team isn't really speaking on it but it it almost seems like he's a uh, he, uh, we talked about this last week, but he, he's trying to be, a, I hate this term, but kind of a mini-me of Trevor Lee. So if that's where he's going with it, I could kind of it kind of explains the awkwardness to me a little bit. But I think he's uh, really talented, and uh, I really hope he starts winning some matches. I mean, he's, gosh, in the course of three, four weeks, he's taken the uh, Canadian Destroyer about nine times, it feels like. And with the way they tape, I mean, he's, he's tape, taking it multiple times in a row it feels like every night so this guy his poor head but um it as as far as the result of this match it was kind of expected to me i mean i, I said it last week i'm pretty sure caleb conley's gonna take the fall here and uh but the match itself was laid out very nice and is very very fast paced and it's a really good way to kick off impact the crowd was into it, and these are four just super talented guys, and there was just a lot of killer offense in this. I mean, um, Petey Williams and Sanjay really did some really cool stuff together, and I like the combination of Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley going forward, especially because it gives Trevor Lee something to do where he can show his personality, because we saw all this charisma and personality he had when uh, once Helms was out of the picture. When Helms was the talker, it was kind of like the Helms dynasty was kind of cool and all, but... Now that he's out of the picture, and now we, we're letting Trevor Lee do all this talking, cut his own promos and everything, it's like, man, this guy, this guy is really entertaining. And now I'm starting to buy into him a lot more. I know that he, in the, on the indie scene, he does a lot more than he does on Impact, but I was never totally tr buying into Trevor Lee. Um, but I think I think they're doing something similar with Eli Drake, where they said, hey, we want to keep you around, so we're going to give you the ball to run with a little bit. And uh, so they, so P.D. Williams and Sanjay Witt, I'm sorry, P.D. Williams and Sar Sanjay Dutt win. Remember, this is early for me, guys. We're, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an early morning. But um, they win the match, and next week we're going to get a, I believe it's a Falls Count Anywhere match with um, Sanjay and Trevor Lee. If I had to make my prediction here, I think Trevor Lee is going to take the title. Now that he's, he's um, showing all this personality i'm willing to buy into a x division run with him and sanjay you know he lived his dream he won the x division title but he has a, he has a backstage role and it's going to be an increased role here fairly soon so uh um yeah i'm going with i'm going with trevor lee on this one lax has a uh match with john bolin and zachary wentz this is uh the squash match of the show I think squash matches are okay if they're um, if they put them in the right spot, if they're not too long, and there's a point for them. So I like to get one every once in a while. It's good for. Uh, I mean, I'm an old school guy, and uh, I don't know the ages of everyone listening right now, but if you're around my age, I'm almost 38, and you kind of grew up off the 80s stuff where there was a lot of squash matches. You remember that squash matches were really necessary because it helped it helped build up a person to look like a big deal, and uh, when you when you when you put wrestlers in competition with other you know wrestlers off the off the roster every single week, no one really gets over because you might see a lot of fifty fifty booking or you might see you know the Caleb Conley effect where he's just kind of losing all the time. I wouldn't call him jobbing, but he's he's just always losing, and you just don't want to see that with the roster. So anytime you guys can get wins, especially if it's people debuting, because I never liked when someone debuts and beats an established member of the roster. But if you're if you kind of grew up off the old stuff, you can see why squash matches are pretty important. Um, you can you can make anyone look good. So this was a quick match. They got they got everything in, and. 
this is what I didn't really care for with all this. And this was a solid episode overall. I wasn't jumping up and down like I was the last three weeks, even though I think some people consider this week better than the last three weeks. But for my own personal taste, I like the last three, Destination X and the following two, a lot. And this, and this, I did like it, you know. Um, I just, but I thought it was solid, and uh, we'll we'll get to why later. Um, why it was went from uh, great to solid. But OVE comes out, and I had stated this before. OVE is struggling on the microphone, and it's uh, it's no knock on these guys because they're super talented, but I think that uh, you know, they they're just career indie guys, and they don't they don't really know how to talk yet. And they came out and Conan just embarrassed these guys as far as uh, taking jabs back and forth. You know, OBE went out there with very standard um, dialogue and Conan just rips these guys to shreds. And I thought it made them look very bad. But it set up a match at the crash, which we're going to see that next week. And I hopefully hopefully we get to see, mo it, it, see it in entirety or pretty close to it. But this is my issue with the tag team division right now the tag team division is extremely talented this is the best tag team division we've had in a long time let's face it but this is the issue i'm kind of having here lax is running through everybody and it just seems like instead of uh taking the time to really build opponents for them they're they're just running through people right away and uh I think what kind of did the team a disservice is when they had those Global Force, the the uh, Global Force Tag Team Tournament, which was really, in hindsight, kind of unnecessary. They could have, uh, they could have still made them the Global Force Wrestling Tag Team Champions <laughs> without them uh, having to unify the titles themselves. So I thought that kind of hurt them because they they pretty much faced everybody. I know they only faced two teams, but you know that it, it's it's like they're beating everybody already. And who else can you possibly feed them? You know, I guess Reno Scum, you know, maybe that's something they're able to build towards in the future. But that that's just my issue. You know, give give uh, OB, OVE someone else. But then at the same time, there is no one else because there's no other heel teams. There's just uh, Mario Boca run Fala Bond. They already beat them. So that was my whole thoughts on it. LAX really needed this because... Uh, I don't want to say it did damage to them, but man, that those few weeks where Alberta was just running all over them was uh was kind of hurtful uh, to their momentum. So that those were my issues, but uh, should lead to a good match. Allie and Gail Kim take on Sienna and Taryn Terrell. This was what I was really waiting for because I mean, God, I love Allie, I love Sienna, I love Taryn. And uh, respect Gail a whole lot. She's not one of my favorites in the world, but I'll be uh, I'll be sad to see her go when it when her time is up. And I think she's been a really good ambassador for the ambassador for the company. So this match, my concern with what this match was going to be was that it was going to be extremely quick, and it it was pretty quick. Uh, I you know went over four minutes. I had said I hope this is not a three minute match. It was a four minute match, but the the. Uh, Action was pretty quick, so to me it didn't really feel like four minutes. I would I would have thought it was a six or seven match minute match pretty easily, until I saw what the uh, official time was. So uh, I I kind of want to know: Do you guys think that Gail Kim should be kind of showing some ring rust? You know her character because she she seems to be uh, pretty pretty smooth and fluent in there. I don't, I don't know if they should be selling a little bit of ring rust. Or some kind of injury, because I'm trying to think. I don't remember what it was she hurt, if it was her back or neck or whatever. But I feel like they should be exposing that a little bit on the show. But they're not really doing that at all. However, with everything being said, I thought the tag team match was, was pretty good. It was better than I expected it to be. I was a little disappointed Taryn didn't really get in and wrestle. It almost seemed like she didn't want to. She kind of came in to do the uh, to get the cheap shots and then tag out. So that's, that's a heel tactic. But I don't think it was necessarily needed. So I, d I don't really know what that was all about. Because uh, it wasn't like she got some cheap shots in at Gale. And then Gale got up to mount a, a comeback. And then all of a sudden Taryn ran and ta tagged out. I mean she would get a couple moves and tag. She hit that rolling net breaker which, which, which is uh, really nice. But other than that she was just kind of stomping and, and punching. Wasn't doing a whole lot. Making Sienna do all the work. Still trying to figure out what the connection is between Sienna and Taryn 
I don't know if they're not doing a good job of telling it or or it's just over our heads, but we're going to see as the uh, as things roll forward in the future. I kind of like when Taryn, uh, not when Taryn, but when Sienna is kind of working with someone else because LVN's kind of out of the picture at the moment doing the Grado stuff. And uh, so I think I think it's good to, to pair up with people. I always kind of like when they do that. Ali looked really good in this match, and uh, as I've stated before, Ali is not in that character anymore where she can't wrestle. So some people still say, well, they can't act like Ali can't wrestle forever. Well, they're not. They haven't been. She just hasn't been in the ring as much lately, but she's not that character. She, she's the Ali kind of airhead character. And some people have stated, too, that, you know, um, we see it all the time. People, oh, we want the Cherry Bomb character and... Um, I've got, I've had some good conversations with people about it back and forth where I really think that character would have would have been a little too bland for impact. Um, I, I like the Alley character because I like characters, I really do. And when someone says, "Well, I don't I don't want the Alley character, I want the Cherry Bomb character," you got to remember too these these uh, workers have a lot of creative freedom, and you know Alley's being the Alley she wants to be out there. She's not a uh, no one's forcing her hand. So obviously she thinks this is the correct route to go. This is the route that she wants to go, and she built a lot of babyface sympathy with this character that she wouldn't have gotten otherwise. If she just went out there as a vanilla wrestling character, then you know. So that's why I think LVN is so great because if you know there is some vil- vanillaness to her as well, but this gives her just something to you know character gives her something to do. And I like Allie. I like I like the way Allie is. As long as she goes out there and competes and wrestles, I don't really care what her um, how she talks backstage and on the mic and all that. So the only thing with this match was that the finish. Oh, the finish was terrible. So Allie goes up for the cross body block, and Sienna rolls through it and and uh, hooks the tights and gets a pin. And the minute she rolled through it, I knew that was the end of the match, and I was like, oh. I just I just kind of rolled my eyes because that's not the I just would have I wanted to see a better finish and I knew that's exactly where they were going with it the minute she rolled through it so I didn't care for that very much but as I've said whenever you, whenever on Impact you get these short matches it usually means that they're kind of building to something afterwards with a promo so what happens was they're um, attacking post match and Rosemary comes down so Rosemary's music hits we haven't seen her in a little while. And she gets a little offense in, but this was probably the worst Rosemary has ever looked. And I don't mean by uh, her own accord, but I mean as far as her going out there and really ending up on the losing end really quickly. And then we get Taya Valkyrie's music hits. So cool. I mean, great entrance name. And I'm a big fan of uh, Taryn's entrance name, by the way. I think it's badass. But speaking of entrance name, Taya's got a really nice one, too. Really great entrance. She comes down, walking slow, walking like Mahabali Shira slow. And uh, she hits the ring. She really fooled me with this one. I think I think she f- might have fooled you guys too. I don't know, you know, unless you're reading the spoilers and everything. But I think we were under the impression she was going to show up as a baby face. And she, uh, she turns and attacks Rosemary after teasing that she's going to take out Sienna. And it's crazy because just a few weeks ago, I was saying they have no heels in a knockout division. Now, all of a sudden, you, you're adding Taryn and you're adding uh, Taya as well. And now business is really picking up in the knockouts division. And it's really balanced out as far as uh, good heels and, and good baby faces. So, obviously, it looks like they're kind of teasing a, a, a six-woman tag match. So, uh, you know, maybe we're going to see Sienna, Taryn, and... Uh, and Taya versus Gail, Allie, and Rosemary here soon. But again, I thought, I don't know if this bothered some of you guys. I thought Rosemary looked so bad here. I mean, just the way that, uh, you know, she came out there. She mounted some offense. It didn't last long. And then Taya's music comes out. And then it shows Rosemary. And this is what, you know, was kind of the swerve and everything. It shows she has, you know, uh, pleasure on her face. <laughs> That's probably the wrong term I want to use, but she's she's excited that that uh, Taya is there, almost like she's out there to help. And um, when Taya got in the ring and started, you know, uh, pretending she was going to take out Sienna, and then the way Rosemary walked up and stuck her finger out, it, it almost seemed like she was just out of character for a second. It was it was just awkward to me. And then uh, Taya laid her out. 
and then uh, hit her finisher on it. Um, I don't know if that's what the finisher she uses in uh, Lucha Underground. I'm really behind on Lucha Underground. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, God, I'm still um, still watching the second season. I, I haven't watched what they're doing um, at all this year. But, uh, yeah, that finisher was... Um, it, it, it's a pretty good finisher. It's not as good as like Beth Phoenix used to do because she was taller and stronger. But, you know, it, she laid her out. And uh, I'm really excited for Taya and to see what's going to happen. I don't want them this. I don't want to see them do too much with the knockouts too quick as, as far as, you know, tag team six man and just throwing all these pieces together. And, and then it, it's not special down the line later. So I would, you know, I, I'd like next week to maybe see a Taryn versus Ali match. Or something like that, you know, because Tara needs to get some kind of something under her belt before she gets in a ring with uh, Gail Kim one on one or anything. You know, they got they got to feed her some some of the gals. Um, I don't want them, them to feed her Allie, but I don't believe Alicia or uh, MJ or Ava are at the tapings. Um, Ava might be. So we'll see what's going forward. But um, good, good overall segment. And uh, this is where this is the point of the show. Where um, we just got, uh, it, it was getting ready to get into promos and video packages. And Jim Cornette comes out and talking to the fans and everything. Talking about the Drake and Seidel match. And then uh, LAX comes out. I don't know about you guys. I've said it a couple times. Now that I know what the status of Loki is, I'm, I have like no interest in seeing him out there. Uh, the couple, you know, last week he had the match with Storm and then he was in a gala and I thought he looked really good and I kept thinking, man, I, I do want him to stick around. I want them to work something out, but seeing someone on the TV and this happened last year with, uh, Rude and Eric Young when they left at the beginning of the tapings after like the first night of tapings. And then we had to sit there and watch him for two months. Uh, that's kind of how I feel low key here. And it's just, I really tune him out. So I, I, God, I, ha I had a hard time with this segment, but. John Hennigan comes out and they set up John, I'm sorry, Johnny Impact. And they set up Johnny Impact versus Low Key for next week. So the match itself should be really, really good. And um, I'm sure I'll enjoy it, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm tuning Low Key out. I don't know if any of you guys are. It, uh, it, he, I, I'm just tuning him out. I can't get around it. So uh, they show the LVN and Grado clip from last week where she, where she lets everyone know that she's Canadian and, as I've always said, let stuff play out instead of uh, trashing storylines online because, obviously, they, they are factoring this in. Grado has to break up with her, and we're getting now another breakdown from LBN. I thought the way the video, uh, the video editing for it was excellently done. Is that a word, excellently? It was, it was, uh, it was very well done. And we're obviously going to get Laurel breaking down again. And, you know, if, if you're someone who, who is kind of done with the character, I mean, I think the character has a lot of life in it, but they just have to have um, different layers and they got to do different things. And I thought the character was really cool. I was never I was never really crazy about the pairing with Congo Kong. Uh, I liked it on paper. But when she started acting like she was a monster and it kind of became comedy, that's when I kind of, uh, I don't really care for this. But if she's more of like a, a psychotic bride and she's kind of crazy and everything, I think that works. And I think it's fun. And Grado apparently heals her. She's a changed woman. And now she's kind of kind of losing it again. And I could see this happening throughout her uh, time with the company where maybe she does kind of return back to normal and then you know something something snaps her so i could see that happening and i think that would uh, be kind of cool so but again like i said this is where we got about 30 minutes of video packages and this is where this is why i kind of said the episode was solid as opposed to really good because if they were able to squeeze another match in here and it was a decent match i think it would have been a really good night but this was um yeah a lot of video packages they show all the Triple Mania stuff, which was really, really well done. And, of course, you know, they, they try to uh, highlight the fact that uh, Rosemary got that injury by Sexy Star. And they posted that clip on social media. People started losing their minds 
oh, Jeff Jarrett's trying to make money off this and uh, all that crap. And then now that we saw it on the show, which was my gut instinct, but now that we saw it on the show, it wasn't hardly anything. You know, they kind of touched on it, but by no means did they, you know, hammer it home. I don't think they should have touched on it at all, personally, but it was just a little something. They said a little something, but they focused on a lot more than that. The uh, La Parca and back, the the, sta- the backstage segment with La Parca and Jeff Jarrett, so they were trying to tie that into what happened with Rosemary, but I think that was uh, intended for something else. I think um, they were trying to do another storyline with Jeff Jarrett, obviously, but uh, he, he he's looking pretty out of shape. I don't know if out of shape is the word. Maybe he's just, he's just old and has that dad bod now. But uh, I didn't even know he competed at Triple Mania. I still haven't watched the damn show. Uh, I've, I've just been so slammed the last couple weeks. And um, I really want to sit down and watch it. But I didn't know he competed at it. Because he was in the uh, wrestling trunks. Global Force wrestling trunks. But the whole thing was done well. But I thought that, that backstage part was a little campy. I mean, they, they made it look fairly real. But... It's like we we see Jeff Jerry yelling at America's top team. We see him uh, yelling at La Parka now. You know, just kind of. <laughs> I guess that like we can see why he gets a, he's on the leave of absence now, right? So, but uh, you know, it, it's in all seriousness, it's been uh, they've been doing that the last several weeks of Impact. Jeff Jerry yelling, so it didn't really do a whole lot for me. And then we get a Desmond Xavier video package and the uh, Pagano video package. So again, it was just, just, just yeah. then the Eddie Edwards one. I mean, it was just boom, boom, boom. And then the Garza Jr. one. I mean, it just, it seemed like it wasn't going to stop. Shows Dick Justice backstage. Um, he's, he's injured and uh, he's looking, he's just, just in case he's getting ready just in case. Then we get into the main event of the evening, Eli Drake versus Matt Seidel. So, uh, before I get into this, viewership was real low for this show. It was the third lowest ever on Pop. I think it was 220,000, something like that. But here is the thing, and I'm not trying to make excuses by any means, but facts are facts. They made it, they still made it into the top 150 of cable television programming, and they didn't last week when they were at about 265, 268, or something like that. But they, they weren't in the top 150 last week, but they were this week. That means the NFL hit was across the board. Everyone took a huge hit from the NFL. And, um, you know, the fact that they were down 40,000, you know, that that's a lot in the uh, impact viewership numbers. You know, by those standards, that's a lot of people. But in the uh, standards of television in general, like 40,000 is, is almost nothing. So, uh the, the, the hit was all the way across the board, so the fact that they were in the top 150, they weren't last week, I think this um, would have been comparable to more of a 280,000 uh, viewer show, if, uh, if you understand what I'm saying with that, if that makes any sense to you. The main event, Eli Drake, Matt Seidel. So they're finally hopping on the gravy train and giving Eli Drake the opportunity to be the main event. And, you know, as I was watching this match, I was thinking, you know, gosh, maybe, well, Matt Seidel has only been around for a few months, but, you know, a few months ago, if they were to tell me the main event of Impact was going to be Eli Drake versus Matt Seidel, I I don't think uh, people would have been too excited about it. Uh, They have, you know, big fan bases, both guys, but I'm, but I'm just saying as, you know, from uh, the, the standpoint of star power, people be like, what are you doing? But now Eli Drake is the champion, and he had a pretty solid match here. And what it seems like with these main events, they've been giving him a lot of time, like over 20 minutes. You you could you could uh, argue that the matches are going a little bit too long, but you cannot argue that they're not giving these guys time to, to do some work. And I think Matt Seidel was a really good opponent for Eli Drake at this point because he did get that upset win over Lashley, and he's been undefeated since coming with the to the company. You know, he's beat Eddie Edwards, Braxton Sutter, uh, Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley. I mean, he he's just beat a whole cast of guys. So I think he's been built up really, really well. So this was a good person for Eli Drake to face. And the match overall was extremely solid. 
it uh, wasn't something to write home about necessarily, but, but, uh, you know, the crowd was into it. I was into it. I hope you guys were into it too. And he gets the win at the end, hitting the gravy train. But what do you guys think about the finish? Did he really need to use the world title? Because he's got, so he's got Chris Adonis on the outside and they're going to do the heel distraction thing. I mean, that's just, that's just the name of the game when a uh, heel's got someone out there. But I don't know if the, if the, uh, title to the head was too necessary but it didn't bother me a whole lot I mean I, I thought it made sense because he's a heel champion but I would like to see him get some clean wins we don't want this to be like the Eddie Edwards title reign where he he only got like two clean wins and then he kept getting distraction wins and stuff like that controversial wins we don't want that with Eli Drake we want uh he has a, this has the potential to be the EC3 title run um even better but he's got to get some he's got to get some real wins in there because the reason I say this is because he wasn't he hasn't been booked like a champion this year at all he hasn't been booked like a champion in the last two years he he loses a lot so what's going to help right now build him in his, his superstar status is to get some really good solid wins under his belt against good people and not having to do the heel tactics all the time I like heel tactics because heels should do that but uh. He, I want to see a little bit less of it. So again, overall, I thought this was 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 solid, and I would have thought it was a really good episode if it, it didn't have all those video packages. But I have a feeling that's kind of what's going to happen going forward because I, as I alluded to, I think they're the nights of tapings are going to be a little bit shorter, and they're going to replace them with some of this footage from Crash Noah AAA. But let's hope they just do it the right way. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Hope you're able to uh, sit through my solo show this week. And um, we're talking Impact every week, so please hit subscribe, whatever platform you're listening to. And we're going to keep doing this. I keep doing this for the Global Force Wrestling fans, and I'm going to keep doing it even if I have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.